Hi guys, Amy from Cruise Craze Fam. I thought it was important to put this uh, video together. It's um, just going to be thrown together. As you can see, I'm sitting on the bed right now, um, kind of hiding away. Apparently we've got, we've got a bit of a shortage in this house of um, space away from children and stuff. So I thought it was important for me to chime in and give my input on the massive announcement that was just made that Pano Australia is being sunsetted as they call it or absorbed by Carnival Cruise Line. So um, for those of you who don't know, Carn sorry, p o was always a Carnival Corporation ship. Um, so there's the umbrella brand, which is Carnival Corporation, and p o was a part of that. p o have been in operation for 92 years now. They managed to survive the pandemic, although maybe that played part in it. Um, and they did actually get rid of a couple of ships in the pandemic. So maybe they just never recovered. Don't really know. Um, it has caught everyone off guard. Now, firstly, before I go too far into this, I am just a passionate cruiser. I have cruised on p o Australia twice. Uh, we have, well, we have a hold on one, but we've also got um, another p o cruise booked at the end of the year with my parents. Um, we've attempted to cruise p o before as well, um, but due to family illness, we weren't able to go. Um, but we have cruised Carnival six times now. Um, I am a Carnival girl at heart, so I have to admit that when this announcement was made, there was a lot of mixed emotions for me. Um, it was a lot to try to digest. And honestly, to this point, it's been a day and a half now, and I still don't really know how I feel about this announcement. Obviously, it is sad to see the end of an Australian cruise line. They only sailed in Australia. There's p o in the UK, but this is p o Australia. They are different. We have one Carnival ship year round, and then we, which is Carnival Splendor out of Sydney. And then we have Luminosa that comes to Brisbane and sails out of Brisbane over the summer season. So a lot of Carnival people have been crying out for more Carnival ships. This is not really the way we expected it. Okay, so yeah, we will get two more Carnival ships <laughs> in this way, but in the grand scheme of things, Australia is losing another ship. So let me explain to you. I've written down the notes, so just excuse me looking down. Um, so this is what we know as of today, which is Wednesday, the 5th of June, 2024. Um, like I said, I am just a cruise addict. I'm not a travel agent, although I've had a travel agent reach out to me, um, cruising with Sarah, shout out to you, and tell me that she was blindsided. She didn't get any heads up. So travel agents weren't even alerted that this was happening. Um, and so there's a lot of well, there's been basically a, not, a lot of information not put out there. So this is what we know so far from today. So Pacific Adventure, which sails out of Sydney. So they have cancelled the itineraries V515, V516, V517 and V518 so that the ship can be converted over to a carnival ship. That puts the blackout period being from the 10th of March until the 29th of March. Now, Pacific Encounter, which operates out of Brisbane, has cancelled uh, cruises 1512, 1513, 1514. After April 2025, all of these, all these two ships will be operated by Carnival. And if you go on the p website now, you will notice that it already says operated by Carnival Cruise Line. So the blackout dates for the Pacific Encounter are the 15th of March until the 5th of April. Now, Pacific Explorer. Pacific Explorer, look, she's an old ship. We sailed on her just in February. We had an amazing cruise. The experience was great. 
the decor was great like they have renovated all of their ships really beautifully but she was showing her rage so one of the first things i noticed is when we're up on deck and i was looking at the timber decking that there was parts where it was rotting away so i remember being alert of that because i have bad knees i've done four acls and i have no acl in my right leg so um i was aware of that when i was up on deck just because obviously i didn't want to get injured um i didn't end up having any issues with it but it is one thing i do remember noticing straight away we noticed loose handrails uh it was evident in things like the elevator on the tables where they had just laid down a vinyl um, and some of that was starting to peel off so it looked great but if you look closely you could see the floors um and then when we we're in the gym we noticed all the equipment was so old it was falling apart there was odd dumbbells um i think that there was a massive jump in the dumbbells as well um and it was just really really showing her age so to get her up to a standard would probably not be profitable i will admit that she needs a lot a lot of work and being a 30 year old ship generally these cruise ships only last about 30 years and then they're just not profitable anymore so i can understand why she is being discontinued so as of march 2nd 2025 pacific explorer will discontinue operations she is done we don't know yet what's happening if she's being sold to another company or if she's being scrapped altogether but we will no longer have the pacific explorer um it is really sad and for me, being a Melbourneian, this is where it really, this is probably the biggest downfall for me. This now means that here in Melbourne, also in Adelaide and in Perth, we no longer have any piano ships. We don't have Carnival. We don't have um, Royal Caribbean. The only family option that we now have here in melbourne is disney and that's part of the year round and the cost of a disney cruise so we did disney funnily enough we did disney in january that cruise just for a four-day cruise for the four of us it cost us six thousand five hundred dollars <laughs> that's a lot of money and then it was just my husband and I, we did Pacific Explorer the next month and that was only $450. So the cost between the two is ridiculous. So basically for us, Disney is not affordable. We have ticked that bucket list. We have no desire in doing it again anytime soon. And if I'm being completely honest with you and I've still got reviews to do i've been working on a carnival splendor review funnily enough but um i still haven't done my reviews for disney yet or the P pacific explorer but let me tell you the food on pacific explorer was way better than disney and i might get a lot of backlash for this because a lot of people love disney but i was so disappointed by the standard of food for what we were paying and then to go on the pacific explorer shortly after and have a great experience with the food it just blew me away that for a fraction of the price for a hundred dollars per person per day we were getting excellent food we were getting really good food so what this means now is if we want to do a now carnival cruise which is what we've always done. We love Carnival. We've done six cruises. We are willing to fly for them. But for us to fly a family of four to Sydney, it costs us, if we get cheap flights, about $1,200. If we get average price flights, about $1,500. If the prices are up, we're paying up to two grand. So we have to pay that first before we get to the ship. 
then we'd have to book a hotel. In Sydney, we stay near the airport, which is cheaper than going into Sydney. Because if we were go, to go into Sydney, we're paying uh, $500 plus for a hotel room for a night. We stay out near the airport, we pay about $250. But again, that adds up. And then you look at transport to get to the port. So before we even get on the ship, between food, travel, um, flights, um, accommodation for a night, we've spent about two grand before we even get on the ship. So that now means that weekend cruises or getaways or short cruises are ruled out from anyone who's not from Sydney or Brisbane. So... For us, this is a massive, massive change and a massive disadvantage. We no longer have a getaway option. We are willing to fly for longer cruises. So we are doing 11 days on the Carnival Splendor in October. And the reason we will do longer ones is because we have to fly there. So we're going to make it worth it. But that now means that we don't get any little getaways. It's only going to be long holidays. So we're going to be limited to how long we can go away on a cruise. Now, dining cha changes. So this is an interesting thing. Um, so Carnival will do the MDR or the main dining room or you've got your Lido deck. Uh, p and do it extremely different. They've got three restaurants. So they've got the Dragon Lady They've got Angelo's and they've got the waterfront. Um, and you can book any of those restaurants. We only had a two day. So we did um, Angelo's the first night, which is the Italian restaurant. And we did Dragon Lady, which is the Asian cuisine, cuisine on uh, the second night. We did waterfront for breakfast and for lunch. And we loved all the food. Um, one thing with... Uh, P&O is they understood allergies like I've never experienced on a ship. When I said to them, I can't have dairy, they understood straight away. I tell them on these other cruise lines, they don't understand. They bring me gluten free. It's You will have seen in my videos, I rant about it a bit because it is frustrating. I don't know what they're doing with the dining, whether there's going to be those separate restaurants or if they're going to change it to the main dining room where with Carnival you have the dancing waiters and it's a bit of a show. And I love that. I love that about Carnival. So, you know, we really enjoyed our dining experience on um, P&O as well. Although I did feel for the kids, the MDR experience is probably better than these separate restaurants. They did feel very grown, I guess. So... Also, will they now have free ice cream like you get on Carnival? You get unlimited free ice cream, unlimited free burgers um, and chips at Guy's Burger Joint. And they are great too. The standard is amazing. And that's a staple of Carnival. So is that going to come? Because the funny thing is Luminosa, when she was converted over from Costa, they didn't add a Guy's Burger Joint. They only added a burger joint. So will guys come will they have the blue iguana which neither of our ships have luminosa she does have a taco and burrito place and they're great uh carnival splendor doesn't have a blue iguana but that is another carnival staple uh blue blue iguana to cantina it's your tacos and burritos and they are amazing so Will they come? Will the free pizza come? Because P&O charge for all these things on their ships. Which that brings me to the next one, entertainment. So the Edge is a experience on P&O. They've got uh, the flying box or zip line, um, if you want to call it that. They've got the walking the, blank, the walking the plank. They've got rock climbing. They've got... Um, uh, what do they call it? Um, the Titanic experience. So they've got all these things. Um, will they become more like the Carnival Sky Zone where it's actually included in the cost? So if you can see here, Carnival have a lot of inclusions as far as food and entertainment. Is that going to become included or is that still going to be an additional cost, which is pretty 
it's a pretty hefty cost to be totally honest. I'm sure it's a great experience. I haven't done it yet just because the first cruise we were just doing on a budget but Alira got an ear infection so we didn't leave the cabin for pretty much the whole three days that we we're on the ship um and then the two-day one we thought about getting it but it was going to be expensive and we're like we've only got one sea day and if that sea day is windy those activities are getting cancelled so we didn't bother booking it so yeah that's probably going to change i would assume the dr seuss carnival experience will carry over so they've got susa palooza which is their parade through the ship um and then the dr seuss story time they also do a dr seuss breakfast which is now thing one thing two birthday breakfast um and they're fun experiences for families so it will be good to have an those um family experiences over there and that's a lot of what we love about carnival so for us they're pros. Affordability. So I was having a conversation again with my mum and husband about this today. P&O typically are one of your cheaper options. Now that Carnival is taking over P&O, they're no longer competing. They don't have to compete for cost. And cruise capacity at the moment is, the cruise industry is booming. These cruise ships are getting filled up at the moment. So I guess there's already the demand, but now they have nobody to compete with because let's face it, Royal Caribbean's a lot more expensive than Carnival. Norwegian, the prices in Australia are just ridiculous that we don't even look anymore because it just doesn't even make any sense for us to do it. And then we've got Princess, which is not a family cruise line. It's a lot more based for the older adults. And then we've got Celebrity, which is definitely not a family cruise line. Funnily enough, we are doing Princess and Celebrity with the kids next year. So make sure you like and subscribe to the vlog because um, that could be interesting. I don't know if people are going to be turning their noses up at us for bringing rowdy children onto the ship. Don't know. But what I'm saying is we don't have, there's no competition for them in the family market anymore. So is that going to drive prices up um i'm gonna have a look here at this email that i got from pno today but it's our comedy cruise that is in december um and saying dear amy we have announced a pno cruise cruises australia will become a part of the sister company carnival cruise line in march 2025 as a valued guest, we are writing to confirm that your cruise is unimpacted by the announcement. Pacific and Adventure, uh, sorry, Pacific Adventure and Pacific Encounter will be taken out of service for two weeks in March to undergo some technology and systems upgrades. And when they return, they will be rebranded and sail as a part of the Carnival Cruise Line fleet. Post integration, the Carnival Cruise Line year-round fleet in Australia will include Carnival Splendour, Carnival Adventure and Par uh, Carnival Encounter, as well as Carnival Luminosa, which will sail from Brisbane seasonally. So that's what I said about Carnival Luminosa not being here year-round. It's only seasonally. It's only over summer. All the ships will feature Carnival's popular hub app, onboard technology to enhance the cruise experience and P&O Australia guests will be invited to participate in the Carnival Loyalty Program among other benefits. So that's another note, um, P&O did not have a loyalty program. Um, with Carnival you do have a loyalty program and you do get um, at first small little perks for being in the loyalty program um, and then the more days you spend on carnival ships the more that will increase and eventually for me the gold standard is when we get to um platinum and diamond we will have washing done for us and we'll get priority boarding so they're the ones that i'm looking forward to um so i'll continue reading carnival cruise line is committed to carrying on the legacy of outstanding service and memorable holidays that our guests have loved for more than 90 years 
And this integration plan provides many career opportunities for our great onboard team. So to me, that's saying that they're going to be switching over a lot of the staff over to Carnival, um, which will soon be sailing for the world's largest cruise line. Carnival Corporation will remain the largest cruise operator in the South Pacific with 17 ships across seven brands calling on 78 destinations in the region. While inventory is limited, there is still time to book. So then it just goes on to say that we can still book some P&O cruises before the change happens. And we've got a link to the P&O website. So that's what I got today. Um, so the cruise that we have booked is unaffected. My parents do have a cruise booked for August of next year. Um, that one will now be a carnival cruise. So um, they don't mind. They like carnival too, but they did enjoy p &O. Yeah, not sure how we're going to feel <laughs> about this. Like I said, um, it's just I think the limiting the options is what upsets me. But on the same hand, I'm a carnival girl. Like I said, at heart, I enjoy the fun, the dance. I'm, I'm one of those people who just can't sit still. Like people will probably hate me, but I'm always up and dancing and having fun. That's just who I am. So for me, carnivals always suited my personality um, quite well. So um, we've talked about the Carnival Hub app. So basically it's just p &O had an app, Carnival had an app. Now you'll be using the Carnival Hub app. So um and the loyalty program. Um, so the last thing I'm going to talk about is, does this mean that all the theme cruises that P&O does, so they do comedies cruise, comedy cruises, 80s, 90s, um, 70s disco, so they do different themed cruises and people love those. So is that going to be continued once it's carnival or is that discontinued too? So there is a lot of questions at the moment. Honestly, nobody has the answers. It's early days. This announcement was made yesterday being the 4th of June. So it is a brand new announcement. It's early days. If you've got a cruise booked and you're not sure, you've got two options either way and see what happens because they will let you know eventually they're probably being inundated with calls and questions at the moment so let that chill a little bit and then follow that up or you give them a call um, and have a chat and then <laughs> actually so that's one thing it did bring um we did bring up in our discussion because my parents love cruising as much as my husband and I do so we were all talking about it together so p &O's call center is, I think, in the Philippines. And every time I call, no offense, but they're shocking. They're useless. They, they don't really know what's going on. Um, I've tried to alert them of my allergies and they just did not understand what it meant. Um, and every time I call, like, basically, I just don't want to call them. Um, another thing is you can't make payments on their website so if i want to go on and just say pay 200 dollars, you can't you have to call the call center for P&O to make a part payment unless you set up the direct debits um, or you pay in full on the website so there is a benefit of switching to carnival because carnival i've always had amazing customer service their call center is in miami i've always had incredible service um, they are very, very helpful. They're very upbeat. I've always had a great experience on the phone with Carnival. Even if I'm on the phone for them for like an hour or two, they are amazing. So that's a pro. Um, and like I said, on the Carnival website, if you just want to pay off your cruise, say you get paid, you want to put $200 towards your cruise, you can do that. No problem. You just log onto the website and you do that. And that's one thing you can't do with p &O. So there are definitely perks um of it switching over to P&O but it is at the end of the day an extremely sad day for Australian cruising we are losing our one and only cruise line that we have here that have operated for 92 years so very sad to see the end of P&O interested to see what the changes are um I 
do have another potential two P&O cruises booked. I've already got a vlog, so check out our vlog. Um, but then keep an eye, make sure you like and subscribe. So like this video, subscribe so that you can see our future uh, vlogs. I've also got carnival vlogs if you want to compare. So I'll leave a link to my uh, Pacific Explorer videos and my carnival ones. Um, I do have more carnival vlogs coming, um, but I work full time. I'm literally, it's here eight o'clock at night. I'm still in my work uniform doing this video because I thought it was important to get it out. So make sure you subscribe to my videos, check out my vlogs. I will hopefully keep you updated as I hear more, but it's all early days right now. There's a lot of moving parts. So watch this space. Thank you for watching, especially if you're hung to the end. Thank you.